All right, so let's talk resources. In this lesson, we walk through where the documentation is located, how to use and read the docs, and some helpful features that you can use while developing an iTwin enabled application. So let's take a look at the docs. All our iTwin platform documentation is located at developer.bentley.com. Um, most of it is here in this documentation tab. So over here on the right, uh, the overview section, there's a lot of great information that's relevant to all uh, APIs. I'm not gonna go through all this material in detail, but if, for example, you run into issues with authorization, the authorization section uh, is particularly helpful, and uh, there's a lot of great info in here about authorization. In the main section of the page, you can see all the available iTwin platform APIs grouped by these tiles. And as I mentioned earlier, for this course, we're gonna be interested in the iModels API and the Projects API. So let's look at our app real quick. The Projects API is gonna be used to do all this work on the left, and the iModels API is gonna be used to do all this work on the right. All the features that we're gonna add will have corresponding iTwin platform API requests. So that'll be getting the user's projects, toggling favorites, and getting iModels. There'll be requests uh, for each of them. So switching back to the doc site, I'm going to take you on a quick tour of the projects API documentation. Uh, all the other APIs will have their documentation organized in a similar way, so it's really applicable to all. So on this overview page, um, it just gives you an overview on what the API is and what it would be used for, um, the ability to manage projects for the project API. So there's tutorials where you can learn how to use certain features of the API and samples, uh, so you can look at a sample app of the uh, API in action. So here is the documentation for each endpoint in the reference section. Uh, we remember that we're gonna need get my projects as one of the first steps in our app. So each individual endpoint will contain more documentation on what uh, the endpoint does. This one retrieves a list of projects. The authentication section will list out uh, required scopes. Uh, we're gonna talk more on scopes later. Um, down in the response, there's for your request that you make, uh, it'll list out any parameters that are you can have required or not and headers that you need in your request. So authorization is one that's almost always going to be required. Down in the response section, there's some sample responses that uh, this endpoint can send back. So a 200 response will be a JSON object with a uh, list of an array of projects. Then uh, it also lists out some error codes uh, that this endpoint can return. So one really awesome feature on our documentation site is this try it out button. All you click is try it out. Then you select authorization code from this dropdown. It'll sign me in automatically. Uh, at this point, I can enter any uh, parameters and headers that I want to include. Um, I'm not gonna include any right now though. And you see when it signed me in, it gave me uh, an access token. So you come down here, when you hit execute, this will make the request to iTwin platform and it will list the response back that it gets. So I got a 200 response, and as I expected, there's an array of projects uh, in the response. So that's pretty much everything uh, I wanted to cover about our docs and how to navigate them. Uh, you can explore the site more to discover uh, more great resources that are available here. Uh, one important note that I wanna point out is that the token used in Try It Out should always successfully make the request to the endpoint meaning that the token here is well-formed and it has the scopes required by the endpoint. Um, but not all tokens are the same. Some will have more access, and I really mean scopes, than others. So, for example, I wouldn't be able to take this access token and use it to hit an endpoint in the iModels API. Um, that request would fail. So in the next lesson, we will cover more deeply what scopes are and how to configure your application so that it will retrieve an access token with the necessary access.